Hello, this is Math 280, Multivariable Calculus. I'm Professor Wheatley. Today's um, topic is going to be cylinders and quadric surfaces. Definition. A cylinder, what we think of is a, a, an object with circular cross sections, uh, something like uh, um, a tube, for example. But a cylinder is, is, is more than that in the language of, of, of uh, multivariable calculus. It is any surface generated by extending a 2D curve in a direction parallel to a given axis. And we call the 2D curve the generating curve. So these cylinders certainly include what we think of as a traditional circular cylinder, but it also includes other kinds of shapes as well. So let's take a look at one here. Okay, so let's draw the cylinder generated by y equals x squared parallel to the z-axis. Okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's put up our x, y, and z plane. Okay, so remember that there's the positive y-axis, and there's the positive x-axis, and there's the negative x-axis. So the parabola y equals x squared exists entirely above the x-axis in the 2D plane. And in fact, it would look something like that, right? Because if we can sort of imagine ourselves orienting our minds to this. Here's quad one, right? And there's the, the parabola's uh, right half. And here's quad two, and there's a parabola's left half. And so now, what a cylinder means, we want to extend it infinitely far up, infinitely far down. So we're going, we're moving the same curve up a bunch, like that. Right? And we're also pushing it infinitely far down. Uh, actually, I guess that should be on the other side of things. So that looked decent. Yeah, that doesn't look terrible. And more or less, we're, we're, we're getting a, a 3D parabola here, sort of like a horseshoe shape. It's going to extend infinitely far, but infinitely far down. OK, so there's sort of the, the shell of it. All right, so uh, the idea here is start with a curve in two space and uh, extend it. And in this case, parallel to the z-axis. So how does this thing look? Well, uh, let's, let's draw it on here first, and then we'll sort of draw the axes in afterwards. So there's the, the parabola. And then let's see here. So we're sort of extending up like that, and we're sort of wrapping around sort of like that. And we're extending down, and we're sort of wrapping around like that. And there's sort of a, let's see here, and then when it comes around the other side, I want to make this look 3D here, so maybe it'll look like that. And then something, let's see here, so maybe we have a, a, a line like that. Oh, this isn't looking too terrible. And then we come down and we wrap around like that. Imagine that 3D. So let's make the original curve. So it sort of has this paraboloid shape. So there's the original curve, right? And then around it, it extends up, it extends down. 
and we can kind of place the axes. Right? I generally find this to be the best way to do this. Um, trying to place the axes first, at least in, in, in my mind, you wind up having to erase a lot and it's hard to get perspective. If you draw the thing first and then kind of place the axes so they look nice, that might be easier. But do it the way you like. Uh, let's see here. So we want the origin to be somewhere around the middle. So maybe the x-axis is like that and probably the y-axis is coming out. So there's x, there's y, and z is kind of popping up somewhere around that midpoint there. So, I don't know, there you go. And you can imagine this thing sitting at the center, sitting at the origin, right, and extending up um, and extending along the z-axis, uh, sort of brushing the back end of the z-axis that goes up and down like that. So, there's your cylinder. So, and every point on this cylinder has, well, what are its coordinates? Well, it's got, it's got an x value. Its y value is x squared, so this is x naught. To get y, we square x naught, and then z is whatever it is. So the z value is allowed to range freely uh, throughout, uh, and this thing will extend up and down the z axis infinitely far forever and ever and ever. Okay? All right. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I have an idea. Let's, maybe we can actually, you know, these, these axes should probably actually be jutting out of the curve itself, shouldn't they? So they should sort of be coming out. So maybe, because there's about the origin, so how about that? Because that should be like that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then, and then uh, let's see. So X can come sort of uh, behind it, sort of like, um, I like that, so X was okay, I think. Yeah. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I guess we gotta close that up. All right, so there you go. Okay, so that's, that's a cylinder. Now, like I said, uh, our usual definition of cylinder involves something with circular cross sections. Well, that applies here too. Let's do another example. So let's get rid of this. And let's do a circular cylinder this time. So example, let's draw the cylinder generated by uh, x squared plus z squared equals 1 parallel to the y-axis. Okay, well, that's certainly a circle of radius 1 in the xz plane. So let's put our axes up here. So uh, let's see. And then we got y going off like that. And there's x, y, and z. And let's see. We need a circle in the x, z plane. So let's see. So we're sort of doing something that looks like that, maybe? That doesn't look terrible. All right? And uh, over here is the negative x, z plane, or the, the negative x axis, excuse me. And then we're dropping down in the negative z-axis. And then actually out here is the negative y-axis, even though it's sort of veering off into oblivion there. There you go. Okay. So there's a circular cross-section, essentially. Uh, we're going to extend this thing now along the y-axis, not the z-axis. So it's going to extend infinitely far in this direction and this direction, right? It's going to be a tube lying along the y-axis. So we're going to sort of a bunch of lines that are parallel to the y-axis now. Uh, something like that. And then we can draw some lines going the other direction too, but also parallel to the y-axis. There you go. So this thing's going to extend out this direction and up like that. Okay? So what am I saying about this here? Uh, so this is a circle of radius 1 in the xz plane, and we're extending it parallel to the y-axis. Okay. All right, so here comes the beautiful result of this. So let's see here. So there's our generating curve, and let's see here. We can draw, so imagine the y-axis kind of going like this. I'm going to kind of put my other my other circle sort of on the same kind of tilt as that. Uh, let's see here, and then 
So there, that's not terrible. And then we kind of connect all this up. And... Uh, oops, that didn't look nice. There we go, that's decent. And uh, let's see, we can connect this one down here. Okay, and I guess we could probably make this, this is interior, so we'll call that dash like that. And let's see here, that's a circular cross section. And um, the Y axis is jutting out of the middle of it. Right, so there's the Y axis in it. And then the Z axis is kind of, so there's the central cross section. There's that cross section right there. Right, so there's the Z axis, and the X axis is kind of jutting out of it at a central angle like that. And let's see here. So down below, there's negative Z, and over here, there's X. And then out this direction, there's negative X. And then Y just proceeds. I'll even put it in red to make it look nice. So Y just proceeds right down the middle of that cylinder. Right? So there's the positive y-axis. Here, we'll put it all in red. How about that? Great. All right. So, and we see that we do have a, a, a circular cylinder lying on the y-axis. So imagine like a tube with a wire running through it. The wire is the y-axis. So, and that's what we think of as a traditional circular cylinder. Okay? Okay. So, that's a cylinder. What's a quadric surface then? So let's shift gears. Get all this off of here. So, definition. Well, we think about quadric, uh, we should think about quadratics, and it's very true that's what we're talking about here. So a quadric surface is the graph of a second degree equation in space. Well, remember, a first degree equation, the graph of that in space, is a plane. And well, in, in, in two space, linear equations graph lines, uh, quadratic equations graph parabolas. Well, here in, in, in space, linear equations always graph planes. That's true. But quadric, uh, or I'm sorry, um, Quadratic equations uh, graph a wide variety of things. So there's all different kinds of things here under this label quadric surfaces. And so what do these look like? Well, don't forget that when you have quadratics in three dimensions, you've got something that potentially is, is awful looking. So you have ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared. You could have a dxy term and an exz term and, a, and an e or an f. I guess I'm on f now, aren't I? An f. F Y Z term and, and and a G X term and an H Y term and a J Z term and a K. So potentially you you, you could have a, a quadratic featuring um, what ten terms? That's pretty awful looking. We're going to look at some of these that are that do particular things. Lots of them don't do anything nice. They're, they're horrible looking. But we're not going to worry about the horrible looking ones. Okay. So ellipsoids. Well. The name should imply that these involve ellipses somehow. Okay. So what do they look like? Well, typical equation is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. Okay. So it's good to know certain things about these things. Um, in particular, I care most about intercepts and I care about planar cross sections. We'll do intercepts first. All right, well, if I plug in 0 for y and z, well, uh, these terms are gone, right? So I wind up with x squared over a squared equals 1. That implies x squared equals a squared. That implies that x is equal to plus or minus a, right? So those are the x-axis intercepts. All right, well, uh, let's see. The same thing is exactly true for y and z. These have the exact same form every, every term does. So if I cut out, say, x and z, I get y squared equals b squared, 
y is plus or minus b, and I get the same thing for the z-intercepts, plus or minus c are the z-intercepts. Okay? Well, <clears throat> this thing, that is the intercepts. What, what do its cross-sections look like? It has elliptical cross-sections in each plane. Right? And, and when I say elliptical cross-sections, they may be circular cross-sections, too, because circles are just certain f or a special kind of ellipse. Okay? And let's see here. These things are symmetric about each axis, which makes them, I'm not sure, any easier to draw, but it does give you nice properties about them geometrically. And if you happen to have the case where A equals B equals C, well, it doesn't take a big leap of logic to figure out you've got a sphere. Not really an ellipsoid, even though a sphere is just a special kind of ellipsoid. So, all right. Let's examine an example of this and, and, and see, you know, how, how these things really look um, on, uh, in space. So let's get rid of all this. Let's put our drawing skill to the test here. So let's sketch 9x squared plus 9y squared plus z squared equals 9. And I'm, I'm deliberately trying to make this um, not the most horrible ellipsoid you can imagine, so this is not terrible. Okay, so divide up by the 9, that makes some good sense, and we wind up with well, x squared over 1 squared plus y squared over 1 squared plus z squared over 3 squared equals 1. Well, hey, that's the equation of an ellipsoid, right? Okay, well, that's great. So, uh, what are, our, what are our, our, our A, B, and C terms? Remember, it was x squared over A squared, and y squared over B squared, and z squared over C squared. Well, A is 1, B is 1, C is 3, right? Okay. What do the cross sections look like? So, cross sections. Okay. Well, they're going to be either circles or ellipses. Well, it should make sense that in the xy plane, Right? When, I, when I boot out the z term entirely, I just get x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, that's a sphere, or actually it's a circle in, in two space. So in the xy plane, you have circles. Right? So they're rising up over the z axis, just a bunch of circles. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, in the what? In the xz plane, if I cut out the y term, I got x squared plus z squared over 9 equals 1. Well, those are ellipses, right? They're going to be longer in the z direction than they are in the x direction. They're going to be a, 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 a circle that's been deformed and pulled out in the z direction, right? Okay. How about the yz plane? Well, same thing. Cut out the x term y squared plus z squared over 9 equals 1. Those are also ellipses. In fact, they're the same ellipses. Right? The thing should look similar in the yz plane and the xz plane. In fact, it should look identical in those planes. Okay, let's give it a shot here. So, all right, here we go. Let's draw it big to make it look nice. All right. So here's x, here's y, here's z. I'm going to draw the easy cross section first. I'm going to leave this more as a wire diagram than anything else because there's not a real reason to make it more complicated by trying to fill things in, but you'll see what I mean. So in the xy plane, let me draw the, the negative axes too. So there's negative, there's negative, and there's negative. And in fact, I'm going to make a different color here to really show this off. So in the xy plane, I have circles. Right, that circle's radius 1. So we'll say maybe that's the point uh, 1, 0, or negative 1, 0. That's the point 1, 0. And uh, here's the point, or 1, 0, 0, I should say. And here's the, the y, and up here's the y. So I've got these circles that look fairly circular. It doesn't look terrible. All right. And actually, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to let the back side of this, um, that side I want closed. I'll let the back side of this be open 
because it's sort of on the back side of the ellipsoid. So we'll let the, let the back side of this be dashed. Put this further down here. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll make this go further up. There you go. So there's a circular cross section in the XZ, or the XY, excuse me, okay? All right, now, uh, the XZ plane, we need, we need ellipses. And remember, the, the, the intercepts are helping us, are guiding our drawing here. In other words, I, I knew that the X and Y intercepts were on uh, one and negative one. That's why I drew those points there, right? So in the XZ plane, I have ellipses here. So I'm going to say, okay, so I know it crosses the x-axis at the points 1 and negative 1, and it crosses the z-axis at the points 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to start maybe up here, say that's 3 up there, right? And I, I have to touch this point here when I come down with my ellipse, right? Because this is an intercept. So that's true. I'm going to end up maybe somewhere down here. So I'm going to sort of draw like that, right? Okay. And, and this, is, this is an ellipse, so it's supposed to be longer vertically than it is horizontally. So that's okay. And again, I've got I've to come around the back, too, and, and, and sort of fill in like that. Yeah, there you go. There's an ellipse, right? And it hit all the proper intercepts, right? Hit the x-intercept, hit the z-intercept. Everything's good there, okay? And then the y-z plane, I'm going to play the same game, right? I've got to make sure that when I come down from here, I'm striking the y-intercept and coming down like that, hitting the y-intercept over here too. So I'm really going to have uh, very similar ellipsoid-looking shapes there, right? And then I'm going to have to come down like that, right? And let's see here. Did I want to draw? Actually, I didn't. What I wanted to do was make this one here, because this is actually going to be sort of like the back side of it. Yeah, this may be difficult. So let's make this sort of, here, we'll sort of dash this. And let's see if this is going to look a little nicer. So sort of dash this, come in like that, right? And then we will, uh, let's see here, which one I want to do. I wanted to do this. I wanted to get this solid. Yeah. So you can kind of imagine sort of, sort of like an egg shape here, right? And it's enclosing these circular uh, cross sections here. And let's see here. Um, does that look decent to me? Uh, yeah, maybe the circle looks a little bit wide there. But other than that, you can sort of see that it, that it has a very distended shape like this. It's very long and very narrow in the... Uh, Middle, it's a lot narrower than it is longer, so decent enough for me. Okay, and again, uh, the cross sections here, so cross sections give a decent approximation of shape. Now, I mean, computers nowadays can do this thing uh, beautifully, and, and if you are looking for a much better picture than this, I would, I would try some, uh, one, of the, one of the several sites out there that does 3D graphing. But if you're drawing it by hand, I mean, this is a good enough approximation for, for me, certainly. Okay. So, there's an ellipsoid. Cross sections, intercepts came into play. We drew it out. They looked good. All right, let's go to something else here. So, the next kind of quadric surface is a paraboloid. All right. So... Should be no surprise here that we're going to wind up with uh, parabolas somewhere in, uh, in our surface. So, paraboloid, parabol, parab, yeah, paraboloid, okay, that looks good. And those look like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals z over c. Okay. This is actually called an elliptical paraboloid, and even though it's not going to have ellipses necessarily uh, in, our, in our planar cross sections, there will certainly be ellipses, and we can think about that in terms of a paraboloid has got a bowl shape, so the top of the bowl, whether it's a circle or not, is going to be an ellipse. Okay, So uh, if C is bigger than zero also, uh, this opens upwards, just like a regular parabola, we're used to that. And if C is less than zero, 
this thing will open down. So it'll either open up like this or it'll open down like that. Okay? Cross sections. All right, so in the xy plane, well, when you let x and y be zero, well, it forces z to be zero, because c can't be zero. So really, in the xy plane, you have the point zero, zero, zero. And that should make sense, because think about it. I mean, the parabola y equals x squared or negative x squared sits um, on the, the origin. So does this paraboloid. It sits on the origin point. And in the other two planes, well, we've got parabolas. So that's not a shock. So what parabola? Well, if I, if I cut out y, I get x squared over a squared equals z over c. Well, that gives me c equals, or z equals, excuse me, c over a squared x squared. Well, that's a parabola in, in x and z, right? And very similar thing happens in the yz plane. Get a parabola. Again, chop out x. You get uh, z equals uh, c over b squared uh, y squared. That's your parabola. Okay. So expect to have parabolic cross sections in x, z, and y, z here, and the top of the bowl will be an ellipse. All right. So let's sketch one. So example. Let's sketch uh, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals z. Okay. Well, what are our a, b, and c here? a is 4. Uh, I'm sorry, a is 2, excuse me, because it's, it's a squared. So a is 2, uh, b is 2, and uh, c is 1. Okay. All right. And what are our parabolic cross sections look like? Well, uh, so in the xz plane, and this thing opens up, of course, because c is greater than zero. We have the parabola. Uh, we have z equals uh, one what is it? one fourth x squared. All right, so that's uh, strictly wider than our usual parabola of x squared. It's going to look more like that and, and less skinny. Okay, uh, and the yz plane. We'll have the parabola. In fact, it'll be the same parabola, only it'll be one fourth y squared. Right. Okay, so two parabolas. All right, uh, this one I'm, I'm going to draw two drawings here. Um, and hopefully, both of them will be meaningful. Uh, I'm going to draw a cross section drawing, and I'm going to kind of then fill it in and make it look a little nicer. Um, so let's see how this how this turns out. So. And there's x, y, and z. All right. And we know it lies uh, on the origin, right? And it has uh, wide parabolas in the x, z, and the y, z planes. I guess I better put some, put some, uh, some extensions here. Okay, like that. Yeah. Okay. So I need parabolas in the x, z plane and uh, the yz plane. So remember, the xz, the positive xz plane is, 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 is going to be um, this, these two uh, octants here. So if you imagine like here's a wall and it's sort of running like this or running like this, right? So we're going to have sort of a, sort of a, a, a guy looking like that and over here. It's still, it's still wide, but the perspective is kind of going away from us. So it's getting a little narrower. So there's our parabola on the xz plane. So you see what I'm doing here is coming along like that. Okay? Let me make it a little bit wider than that because it's going to otherwise it's going to be too narrow. All right. And then in the yz plane, remember the yz plane is kind of going like this. So here's here's like one wall of it and here's the other wall, right? So we have a parabola sort of extending out like that. Uh, it should probably even maybe a little bit too wide. And then we have one going like that, right? So again I'm going to Nope. I'm kind of pushing it like 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 this, right? So uh, so there's the there's the yz plane and there's the xz plane. All right. So there's the cross-sectional drawings. Those are cross sections. And as you can see, this this doesn't really look as as 
as good as the ellipsoid did in the cross-sectional drawings, as you can call it, looking good. So uh, let's try to make this a little bit nicer looking. So maybe we'll go, um, maybe we'll go over here. Let's see here. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm going to actually leave off the axes. And I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the paraboloid first, uh, rather than, and then I'll draw the axes in after that. So the paraboloid, think about it like this. I mean, here's sort of one front end of it, and, and, and the other end sort of going into the back. So it's kind of like scooping like, like, like that, right? And the other end's kind of scooping, like, so here's, here's one end of the paraboloid scooping, the other end scooping like that, right? Okay? So this thing sort of looks like, let's see here, so there's sort of one end, and it's sort of coming down, and it's scooping up like that. And the other paraboloid is sort of, sort of coming out like that. Let me draw that darker. And its, it's back side is sort of, sort of scooping up like that. And so what's happening here is that we're forming an elliptical top, right? See that? So, see what I mean by the scoop forward and the scoop to the side, sort of like that, right? And so maybe, maybe it sort of really looks like that, maybe. And so there's not a bad looking paraboloid, really. Uh, and so, um, let's see here, how do I want to label this? So remember, these are, this is the paraboloid that sat in the XZ plane, Right, this this guy here in its backside, and this is the parabola that sat in the YZ plane and its backside, and this kind of rounded out the parabola bowl over here, and this ellipse up here. Well, let me let me draw the axes in first, and I'll put the ellipse in. So, this thing is sitting on the x and y axis. So, there's the origin. So x is kind of coming out like that, and y is sort of coming out like that, and and remember this thing is is opening up around the z axis. So the z axis isn't even seen down here. And it kind of pops up uh, maybe right about there and looks like that, right? So there's the z-axis popping out of the paraboloid. So imagine you got this paraboloid sitting on, sitting on, your, on your kitchen uh, table and you got this thing popping out of it, okay? Like an arrow. Uh, this, this top ellipse here, so ellipse is, well, uh, whatever plane this is, I mean, at some point, this is z equals some c. So we'll say this is z equals 1 for simplicity's sake. So when I let z equal 1, we get an ellipse because uh, what do we have? We have x squared plus 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Uh, and this is in the plane z equals 1, for example. Right? And if I made this the plane z equals c, so this thing will go on and on forever. It'll go up and up and up forever and ever and ever. Uh, into the heavens, right? And as you go up there, uh, your, your, your z value gets bigger and, and uh, bigger as you go, and as that c gets larger and larger, you get ellipses where this c is bigger than bigger, and they end up being wider and wider ellipses, right? They end up being larger and larger ellipses. Okay, so there's a paraboloid for you. Okay, all right, um, so the next couple things, let me get rid of all this are hyperboloids, and for these, um, well, it's a little hairy trying to draw them with specific coordinates. I'm going to kind of just draw them generally uh, and, and talk about cross sections here. So hyperboloids, and there are two kinds of hyperboloids, and both of which um, we should think would use hyperbolic cross sections, and they do, hyperboloids of, and hyperboloids of one sheet. Or, uh, or, or two sheets, right? So the old expression, uh, what is it, uh, three sheets to the wind or something like that? Well, not hyperboloids don't follow that, but they're close. So x squared and a squared, y squared and b squared, uh, minus z squared over c squared equals 1. Well, that's a hyperboloid of one sheet. Notice there's, there's, there's one minus, so that's sort of a nice thing to remember it by. The other one, the two sheets, is z squared over c squared minus x squared over a squared minus y squared over uh, b squared, which is equal to 1. And here, well, two minuses. That's sort of nice, too. Okay. Well, what do these things look like cross-section-wise? That'll tell us how they're different. Uh, that's, that's a big indication. So uh, cross-sections on the one-sheeter, cross-sections, 
Uh, well, in the xy plane, I, I knock out z, and, and what have I got? Well, I have an ellipse, right? I have this ellipse equals 1. So, in the xy plane, uh, these things resemble um, paraboloids, right? They have these, you know, these uh, uh, so elliptical cross sections that go up and up and up, okay? So, that's good. That's familiar to us. Well, uh, in the xz plane, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you, you knock out um, the y term, and you get x squared over a squared minus z squared over c squared. And remember, uh, that is the equation of a hyperbola. Okay, so in the xz plane, you have some kind of hyperbola going on. You have something that's going like that on one side here. Maybe I can even use both arms and sort of come in, come in like that, right? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, in, the, in the yz plane, uh, we have another hyperbola, the yz plane. Uh, let's see, so you chop out x and you get uh, y squared over b squared minus uh, z squared over c squared equals 1. And hey, that's another hyperbola uh, in the yz plane, right? Okay, well, by contrast, what does it look like in, in, in two sheets? Well, here's, here's a big change. Uh, in the in the xy plane, i.e. z equals zero. Well, what what happens here? So nothing nothing good. At least nothing that we're used to. Um, you you end up with uh, this equation when you cut out the z term, right? You hack it out, and, and then well, hey, well, you know what's going on here is that uh, you move it around and you see that you have negative one equals x squared over a squared plus uh, y squared over b squared. Well, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. I mean, you're not going to add uh, two things that are greater than 0 and get negative 1. It's not going to work, right? So here, there's no intercept. So this thing does not intercept uh, the xy plane uh, at the point z equals 0. Something's going on there. There's some kind of gap, right? And in fact, we should think about it in terms of this. Um, it's going to be a bigger gap than just a single point, too, because we're going to have to have a gap. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is all the way to, to negative 1. This is, this is a size 1 gap. So if, if your xy plane is like, is like here, you're going to have a gap like a 1 unit big up here and 1 unit big down here. Right? Okay. And uh, let's see, the xz plane, xz plane, uh, well, hyperbolas again, hyperbola. Uh, let's see, so you cut out uh, y and you get uh, z squared over uh, c squared minus x squared over a squared uh, equals to 1, hyperbola. And in the yz plane, you get the exact same uh, general shape, only with the y terms. You get z squared over c squared uh, minus y squared over b squared. Okay, so there's the hyperbolas. So, uh, the big difference here is, is, is very clearly um, that, that this forms elliptical cross sections and, and this forms nothing, at least at the plane, uh, the xy plane with z equals zero. Well, eventually it'll form elliptical cross sections anyway when you go up, but let's, let's look at the pictures. All right, so keep these in mind. Let me erase them though. Um, so we'll boot this out of here and draw a picture. So remember that, that okay, so we wanted to have elliptical cross sections in xy and hyperbolic cross sections everywhere else. So let me draw my 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 um my axes and we'll sort of adjust them as I need to as we need to to make things look nice. So there's xy and there's z and uh, do we need um negative axes? Uh we need a negative z axis, I guess. So we'll kind of drop that down there. All right. So remember, this thing has um, elliptical cross sections in. Well, I'll draw this here. Let's, let's draw the let's draw the hyperbolas first. That's probably easier. So in the in the xz plane, or a, in the um, in the xz plane, yeah. So it's sort of going like you know, like 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 that. Then hi, our hyperbolas look something like this. There's like one there, and there's sort of one in the rear. So let me draw the one in the rear. Actually, looking like that. So there's, so there's on the xz plane, right? Okay, 
And so those sort of form, like if you imagine this thing to look more like a coffee can or, or like a vase, I guess, you have like hyperbola is going like this on, on well, I guess they're sort of actually, uh, yeah, they're sort of going like, like, like that on the one side. And the other side, they're, going, they're doing the same thing. So they're kind of going in on all sides there. So that's, that's the one. Uh, in the YZ plane, they're sort of more, um, I should probably make this. So let's see, so we kind of want this at an angle here. Yeah, there you go. And uh, it's in the YZ plane, they're sort of more um, like that, and maybe something like, like, like that. So what in the world does it look like here? Well, um, let's make this down a little bit here. So we want ellipses in the, in the XY plane. So sort of connect all this garbage together, all right? And, and um, in fact, I'm going to need more room up here, I think. Yeah, I'm going to need more room. So we can kind of connect these together. And, and here's, a, here's an ellipse like that. And so it's got the Z axis sticking straight out of it like that, all right? And let's see here. Um, so there's the sides of it, and it's elliptical on the bottom, too. So it's sort of going do 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 like that. And then here's the bottom ellipse, all right? And let's see here. I want to, let's see, let's move our axes so they don't look so in the way. Um, and let's do that. So let's see here. So we'll get rid of our axes for the time being. But you see what's going on here is that, so this is now extending down out of this sort of vase-shaped object. Here's the hyperbolas on the front side of it and on the back side, right? That's what forms this curvature on, on the front and back side of this thing. And on the sides of it, it's also curved uh, as such like that, right? So hyperbolas facing each other or facing away from each other on the front and back side, and on the two uh, left and right sides, hyperbolas facing away from each other also. And uh, let's see here, so uh, this is all, this is all, um, yeah, we'll, we'll even move this a little bit. So this is like, looking like that, there's X. And uh, let's see here, and so actually this should not be, this should be in dashes too. And then uh, we'll sort of move this down and it's gonna look something like that. So there is a hyperboloid of one sheet, it has, a, has sort of a, um, vase shape to it. And again, these purples here are, are in the XZ plane, are sort of coming out at you a little bit. And uh, the YZ planes are the ones that are sort of facing each other like that. So there's the one sheeter. It looks like a, it's like a, a vase. Uh, the two sheeter, on the other hand, well, the two sheeter, we know there's a gap. And we know that it's hyperbolas uh, and, and um, there's going to be ellipses eventually too. So what's happening here is this. So let's draw our axes. All right, so here's x, here's y, there's, there's z. And we know there's nothing going on down here. It's not, there's, there's nothing there, right? Um, but up above, so there's hyperbolas being formed. Let me draw these here. So hyperbolas being formed like that. And then down below, there's a gap here too, right? There's hyperbolas being formed, right? So these, this is still, these are still hy hyperbolic to each other. I mean, this is a, a, a hyperbola, right? They are still uh, parabolas facing uh, opposite directions from each other. So this is a hyperbola here, hyperbola here, and they are in the, uh, the XZ plane. These are the XZ plane guys. And the YZ plane guys, well, they are going to be, um, so we're going to have something that's going to look something sort of like that. And um, how did I want to do it? Something like that, maybe? And let's see here. So I wanted to do it like uh, that and like that. And again, hyperbolas in the YZ plane are, are facing away from each other also, right? And so what's happening up here is we have ellipses being formed. Um, and this sort of looking like that, right? So what is that? It's a paraboloid, and, and down below, uh, we have ellipses being formed also. Um, actually, I didn't want to cut that off, did I? And let's see here, so it looks sort of like that. It's going to come down, and then that's going to look like that, and we're going to have a bowl shape sort of like, sort of like that, all right? 
So we have these two sort of bowls um, facing away from each other here, right? And so well, let me go ahead and label these here. So I'm going to label this over here too, actually, while we're at it. So this is hyperbola in the yz plane. And this is a hyperbola in the xz plane. And of course, here are your ellipses, ellipse in the xy plane. And over here, well, how big is the gap? Well, this point is z equals c, and that point is z equals negative c, right? So uh, whatever c may be, that is how large of a gap you're going to wind up with uh, between these uh, hyperboloid of, of, of two sheets here. Well, it's called two sheets because there's two different, there's two separate hyperboloids going on. Um, I guess we can probably you know, extend the z-axis down like that and extend it up like that. So there's z and there's z, right? Okay, and um, let's see what I want to label here. Uh, so this is the hyperbola in the yz plane. And um, this bottom half, let's see, this, 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 this part right here is the hyperbola in the xz plane, right? And then uh, it is formed, so there it's front half and it's back half, and there's the front half of this and the front half and the back half of that, and then they are identical to those. So here's here's xz, here's back of xz, front of yz, uh, back of yz, and uh, these ellipses are up here. So these ellipses in the xy plane. Uh, let's see, where are my equations here? So uh, the reason being because when we, when we allow um, z to equal some, some constant there, uh, we wind up with what? Negative x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals uh, 1 minus uh, z naught squared over uh, c squared. And then this will be uh, some constant. And uh, this was going to go ahead and, and, and give us an ellipse here, right? Okay. So, hyperboloid of one sheet, hyperboloid of two sheets. Okay. All right. One more um, structure to, to discuss here that comes up periodically. And this was interesting because it has a, a certain characteristic that the others don't have. Uh, it's probably also the hardest one to, to draw, too. So, drawing them by hand is so often kind of kind of challenging. So it's called a, a hyperbolic paraboloid. Hyperbolic paraboloid. Right? And so it looks like y squared over b squared uh, minus x squared over a squared is equal to z over c. And we'll call c uh, greater than 0. So what does this thing look like in cross-section? Well, so cross-sections, it's parabolas and hyperbolas, right? So in the yz plane, you hack out x, it's a parabola, right? Because you hack out x, you get y squared over uh, b squared equals z over c. That implies that z is equal to... Um, uh, c over b squared uh, y squared as a parabola. And in the xz plane, uh, that's also a parabola. But if you hack out y, you get uh, z equals uh, negative c over a squared x squared. So there's, so there's parabolas in, x, uh, in uh, yz and xz. And in the plane z equals z naught, right, uh, you have hyperbola, hyperbola, right, um, because, let's see here, so hyperbola uh, y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals uh, z naught over c, right, because if you're, if you are allowing um, z to be zero, and what do you get? You get uh, y squared over b squared equals uh, x squared over a squared, and they don't get much that you really like that much. But uh, okay, so what do these things look like? Well, let's see if we can't draw this, this sucker out here. So 
Actually, I'm going to put in the axes last. So let's see. Um, we want a, a parabola and we want a hyperbola. So it sort of looks something like, so there's that part. And then let's see, let's extend this down a little bit. This looks funny. It's supposed to sort of have kind of a saddle shape to it. And let's see. So is this going to look decent? Actually, it won't look too terrible, I don't think. Yeah. All right. So it has kind of this saddle shape to it. And if we stick the, the axes in here, so there's uh, the axis and the x-axis sort of extends out over top it. And the y-axis is underneath it for a little while until it kind of juts out like that, all right? So there's x, y, and z. And, and what's really important here, and I guess I ought to put the, the negative y-axis because it's underneath the saddle for a while. There's negative y. This is the point that's so important here. So this, this saddle shape, so the saddle shape is important. And here's the reason why. So. <coughs> Imagine you're, you're walking along this, this uh, surface, and if you are, 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 are walking along, um, where am I here? So, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, if you're walking along the YZ plane, right, you're walking along this parabola, right, then um, this saddle point is going to be a minimum. Like, you're walking down this way, coming down this parabola here, right, and, and you're going to end up at a at a minimum here. So if you're traveling, so person traveling in the YZ plane is on this parabola here, right? It's Z equals uh, C over B squared, uh, Y squared, right? And so this parabola opens upwards, right? So this point is a, is a minimum, right? So this point that I've labeled here, so uh, this a saddle point near the origin is a minimum, right? It's the it's the lowest point around as far as you're concerned. So you're traveling only in this direction. This is the this is the lowest point around for you. But now suppose you're traveling uh, on the XZ plane. So person traveling on the XZ plane. Well. Now you're coming up like this. You're walking up this way. Well, notice what, what parabola are you on? Well, you're on the parabola z equals uh, negative c over a squared x squared. Now your parabola opens downward, right? So you're walking like this, and this is a maximum. So your, the saddle point for you, saddle point uh, is a maximum. And we're going to come back to saddle points down the road when we talk about um, uh, three-dimensional optimization and stuff like that. But it's an interesting shape because it has one of these, and none of our other surfaces so far have had this kind of behavior where you have this uh, max sometimes and many other times. Okay? And the hyperbola is not so important to you. Uh, we care more about this saddle point here and the parabolas that are involved in it. Okay, that's it for cylinders and uh, surfaces.